Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us for a special uh, edition of today's CNCF live webinar, Kubernetes version 1.26 release. Some exciting stuff coming your way. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm going to read our code of conduct and then hand over to Leo Palke, Fred Munoz, and Mark Rossetti from the Kubernetes 1.26 release team. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee, but there is this lovely chat box that everybody is adding their hellos and locations to, so thank you. That is where you can leave your questions for the team. We'll get to as many as we can at the end, or uh, if it so pertains, we can interject in the middle, um, but we're gonna have a full webinar today, so be sure to leave your questions here for us. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct and please be respectful of all of your fellow particip participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They're also available via your registration link you used to get here today and we'll be on our online programs YouTube playlist. With that, I will hand it over to our release team, Mark, Leo, and Fred to take it away. Thank you, Libby. Uh, I'll, I'll take it from now. Um, well, let me start to say that it's a huge honor to be here and be able to present the major updates of Kubernetes 1.26. I think in, in our uh, independent opinion, one of the best releases of Kubernetes so far. Um, and uh, let me start by presenting the, the, the team. Um, so um, obviously we have uh, our 126 release team leads, uh, Leonard Palke uh, from uh, Liquid Re Reply, um, which led the entire team in terms of the uh, 126 uh, release effort. Mark Rosetti from Microsoft, which was a part of the 126 enhancements team, and it's the, and currently in, uh, is the enhancements lead for Kubernetes 127, and uh, and I, um, uh, Frederic Munoz uh, from SAS, um, which uh, and I was the communications lead for Kubernetes 126. Um, and we have a, a interesting, uh, although not completely original agenda, uh, because we tend to follow the same major approaches in each Kubernetes release um, to share with you today. Um, so we will start by providing um, a, a status update on the 127 release cycle that started very recently. We will then go on into uh, focusing on some of the major highlights, removals, applications, and aspects that we want to really um, um, talk about in terms of Kubernetes 1.6, including uh, the major teams, etc. And then we will go through a per sig list and description, uh, a quick description, obviously, given the time constraints that we have uh, on uh, the enhancements that were not only tracked, but implemented during this uh, release. Uh, in the end, we will give a quick um, description of the uh, release team shadow program, and uh, we'll um, hopefully end with plenty of time for uh, any uh, question and questions and answers from our side um, as needed. Oh, sorry. Can't you hear me? Leo and I can hear you, but I wonder yep, if I can other, hear you. I wonder if other attendees cannot. Okay, maybe, it sounds like other people. Might okay, be perfect. Okay. If you can't hear, maybe leave and rejoin us. Okay. So excellent. Uh Glad it's not uh, uh, on my end because uh, sometimes it happens. Um, I'll 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 proceed then. Um, uh, starting uh, with uh, some updates on the Kubernetes 1.27 uh, release cycle. Um, as uh, you are likely aware, uh, Kubernetes um, has several uh, releases per year, and just when we uh, end one, another one starts, and the cycle uh, continues. Um, and currently, we uh, are on the Kubernetes 1.7 release, which has the following timeline. It started 
some weeks ago in the 9th of January. Uh, it will have the enhancements fr uh, uh, freeze on the 10th of February, code freeze on the 15th of March, and uh, is scheduled for release um, on the 11th of April. Um, the reference to KubeCon here, because uh, it will uh, follow very shortly after the release, KubeCon uh, and Cloud Native Con Europe uh, will start on April, uh, April uh, 17 and, and 21. So uh, uh, this uh, KubeCon will, um, uh, will, will be made uh, in, in the footsteps of the 127. Uh, release. Uh, currently, there are no changes uh, in terms of the uh, planned timeline. Sometimes um, changes do uh, happen in the 126 release cycle, for example. We did have uh, some slight adjustments to accommodate the uh, security updates in Go, uh, but um, the, the process itself um, is uh, made with this in mind, so um, there are the necessary uh, leeway in, in place uh, in order to uh, avoid making uh, any potential uh, rescheduling uh, um, an issue. Uh, and with that, uh, I would, uh, we would, will now go into the Kubernetes 126 uh, highlights, major team changes, removal and deprecations, and uh, there's nobody better to be able to provide this to us than uh, Leonard, our uh, release team lead. Hello, everyone. So if you could go to the next slide. So uh, every re release cycle, we have uh, a theme. So the release team has, has a, a name and the logo and a theme of the release. Um, it does not need to have like a, like a special meaning. Um, so it, it can also be just a joke or anything like this. For this uh, cycle, we, we've been a little bit more, more um, uh, maybe, I don't know. We had like a little bit more thoughts in mind with electrifying in terms of environment. So we want to raise awareness that Kubernetes uh, clusters are deployed everywhere, powering huge systems, and therefore also like requiring a lot of energy. And this is at the moment in the caps not being reflected as much. Uh, so this might be like a big theme or major theme also in the future. For this cycle, unfortunately not. But yeah, we want just to raise awareness. And I hope you also like the logo. <laughs> There will be some some stickers at KubeCon if you if you uh, catch me. All right, for the enhancements, um, we track this cycle forty nine enhancements. So depending like what you count as an enhancement, we also count removals and deprecations. So if you break it down, we have eleven stable ones, ten beta ones, sixteen alpha caps, nine removals, and three deprecations. About the um, stable beta and alpha features, we will uh, talk about them in the SIG updates in a bit. About the removals and deprecations, I believe this is the next slide. No, this is the one after that. Okay, first, um, for the major themes, because we will discuss every one of them in like a little bit more detail, like on a like slide, exclusive slides, I will just like run it down so you have like an overview. Um, like a teaser uh, of what we will discuss this uh, the rest of the session. So first, um, we now use exclusively registry.khs.io. This was uh, broadly discussed. Um, in the past, we used the GCR um, registry. Now we just publish new artifacts to registry.khs.io. So if you use um, or if you pull the uh, artifacts manually, you now have to use a new endpoint. Um, we now um, graduated the signing artifacts to beta. Um, we support now or uh, graduated stable uh, privilege containers to stable for Windows. Um, we have some enhan um, like changes in the CS migration, which is a larger effort. Now um, we also include the, uh, Azure files and vSphere uh, like over like external plugins. Um, we delegated the FS group to the CSI drivers, um, which are, is now stable. Um, there are some changes in the metrics framework. Um, we added some changes to component SLIs, uh, some feature metrics. Um, we have a very big uh, change with dynamic resource allocation, which introduces a new API, which is very exciting. 
Um, it's it's an alpha, and we'll graduate to beta and so on later. Um, we have a cap focusing around uh, admission control. Um, we have one alpha feature for bad scheduling readiness. Um, made some changes for node inclusion policy for pod to, uh, topology spread, which graduated to beta, and node grateful, uh, graceful node shutdown graduates to to beta as well. So as I said, these we will discuss them like separately. So I just want to like go over them quickly so we have more time. Um, right for the removals and deprecations. So the first one. Removal of the cube, uh, cube proxy user use space modes. So we deprecated the user space proxy mode for like over a year, and now it's no longer supported on either Linux or Windows. So um, we removed it after what was deprecated. The next one: deprecations for cube API command line arguments. Um, so there's um, a flag: the master service namespace command line arguments. Are, uh, do not have any effect anymore. And it's basically already deprecated, but not officially. So this cycle, we now officially dep deprecated it. So in the future, we can remove it, which is like policy in Kubernetes. The next one, removal of the V1 beta 1 flow control API. Um, we remove the flow control API server .kHS.io v1 beta 1. And um, now you need to migrate over to v1 beta 2 um, if you want to use it. So this has also been uh, deprecated before. Uh, and the v1 beta 2 is uh, available since 1.23. So there's like a good chance that you're already using that one. Um, for the next one, under SIG auth, um, we remove removal of the entry credential management code. Um, so this cycle, the legacy vendors Did we lost Leo? <laughs> Suspenseful. It looks like it. Yeah, we'll give it, well, I think, a couple of seconds. Uh, unless he didn't notice, and he is, uh, we will only catch him in 20 minutes. But uh, I think that he will join. Otherwise, uh, I can uh, pick, pick it up. Or Mark, do you want to? I don't know. Uh, oh, you can, you can pick it up. If he okay. Um, so we we were on the entry credential uh, management codes. Uh, essentially, this is not completely unlike the CSI migrations in that there there is internal logic that was contained within the Kubernetes uh, code that dealt uh, how specific cloud providers um, had the authenticate the, the, the credential management, and this um, has been um, externalized into plugins, so it's being removed from the, the, the entry source. Um, the removal of dynamic kubelet configuration group uh, is a slightly different uh, reason. It's a removal following the the, the policy that um, when there's not enough uptake and, and, and essentially um, enhancements don't progress into stable, after a while uh, they uh, they get dropped because they they they, they aren't um, used uh, as much as initially uh, thought. Um, in terms of Sigla auto scaling, um, we have the removal of the V2 beta 2 horizontal pod auto scaling API. Uh, which, not unlike the flow control one, means that um, there's a need to update to the uh, to the updated version of the published uh, uh, horizontal pod scaler API. Hello, am I back? You are. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. My internet crashed or something. <laughs> no, this no problems. I I picked it up exactly where you, you were, and now we're you can start at the top. At okay, at the top again. Um, all right. Sorry about we, that. We, we are we are like a single deployment with several parts. Yeah. <laughs> so no what? Well, yeah. Uh, all right. So um, thanks for for catching that, Fred. 
or Mark, I don't know, Fred probably. Um, um, okay, so the next one, removal of the legacy command line arguments related to logging. Um, right, so um, there's um, a couple of flags which we removed. Um, I have not listed in, in my notes, so uh, I need to get them later. <laughs> I don't know, Mark or Fred, maybe you can jump on this. Uh, otherwise, uh, I can move to the next one. Yeah, I, I had the list, but I, I don't have it present right now. Yeah, so... right. Okay. So if, if, if you have any questions about this, I can yeah. I can get it in the, in the meantime between the scenes. Uh, the next one, deprecation of non-inclusive uh, kubectl flags. Um, so, right. So it's so we have like an, an initiative in Kubernetes to remove flags which are not inclusive. So we have, for example, removed now the uh, prune right whitelist flag. Um, so we don't want to have like whitelisting, blacklisting, stuff like this in, in flags or uh, like in, in the Kubernetes project. So we now replace it with the prune allow list, which has the same meaning. It's just a different name. Um, the next one, deprecations of kubectl run command line arguments. So there's several options uh, and arguments in kubectl uh, run, um, which are marked as deprecated. So cascading, so the flags cascading, file name, force, grace period, customize, recursive, timeout, and wait. Um, the, these arguments are already um, ignored, so we don't expect like any problems. Um, for the next one, the CRI v1 alpha 2 API was removed. There might be some like problems in, in your classes. Um, so some, some context for this. So after we removed the Docker shim in 1.25, um, we added in 1.0, no, in 1.24, we added in 1.25 the v1 alpha spec, uh, v1 uh, API spec, and deprecated the v1 alpha 2 um, spec. And we now removed this uh, v1 alpha 2 spec and um, there might be like, as I, as I said, like some impl implications with your CRI. So for example, if you use um, container D and you run a version 1.5 or an older one, this will not work. Uh, if you run something else, you need to consult the documentation or like the, the vendor. Um, likely this is also like just handled by your, uh, um, by your, um, like platform provider, public cloud provider, so they upgrade it for you. Uh, if, if you do it like everything on your own, then you need to watch out for that. Um, for the next one, um, the Gluster FS plugin was removed and is available in tree drivers. There's not much to say about that. We deprecated it last cycle. Um, the Intri OpenStack cloud provider is removed. Um, so this is the uh, Cinder volume type. Um, there's also not too much about that. So, right. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Otherwise, we can move on. Yeah, just uh, this... a note uh, in yeah. terms of the logging uh, flags. It's uh, it, it's essentially the realization of an overall of the uh, K-log uh, component. And just about every uh, single um, flag was deprecated, only uh, Minus V and, and and others were capped. The rationale for this is on the on the cap, but uh, it's aligned with the restructuring of the log infrastructure in Kubernetes. Uh, so the functionality is there. It's just that the K log itself will not have the flags, and the, uh, the information will be accessible in, in other ways. Awesome, thank you. Um, and uh, so now we will uh, do a per seek uh, update. Um, in which we will um, uh, pick uh, some of the ones that we've briefly discussed before and a lot of new ones and give a one page overview of uh, each one uh, with links to the active to the enhancement to the cap and in some circumstances also a link to the feature blog we had uh, 15 feature blogs uh, in this release which is a quite a, a high number and these feature blogs um, are a very good way to have a 
more direct knowledge of those specific features. If not, you have al always the CAP, which is the Kubernetes um, uh, enhancement description uh, that is used and the, uh, and the enhancement uh, itself. Uh, we will start with Seek uh, API uh, machinery uh, and uh, I'll pass the uh, baton again to um, Mark, or again, no, now uh, directly to, to, um, to Mark. Me. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, we are, there are a lot of enhancements and we are kind of only have an hour here. So a lot of these will be pretty quick too. So I'll just give a warning once. Um, first up is the enhancements from SIG API machinery. Um, SIG API machinery is the special interest group responsible for pretty much everything related to the APIs and API server here. Next slide. Yeah, I, I'm good. Yeah, that. okay. Um, the first one is uh, validating admission policies. This one, this enhancement is going, uh, went alpha status. Um, this introduced a common expression language for uh, doing some basic validations and for your, uh, as an admission controller, this is an alternative to setting up a, or like an admission webhook, which can be very burdensome to kind of maintain and deploy. So this is a, a much lighter weight option to do simple validations. Uh, next is uh, the aggregated API discovery feature, which is also going into alpha. Um, this centralizes the, the discovery of all the supported API endpoints in your uh, that the Kubernetes API server knows about. And um, there's so there's new two, two new endpoints, one that uh, gives more information about each endpoint and one that's the kind of the aggregation of them. Uh, using this will help reduce load on your um, against your API server because clients no longer need to spam the API server to see what all the available endpoints are. And uh, last is the Cube API server identity, which is graduating to beta. Um, this just gives a unique identity to each uh, API server instance. So you can identify if there's problems or um, things like that in the cluster. Okay, next is uh, SIG apps. SIG apps is responsible for basically defining and how applications and workloads are defined and managed in their, their cluster, in the clusters. So uh, first is this uh, job tracking without lingering pods is graduating to stable. So previously, um, before this enhancement, if you were scheduling batch jobs, the job controller needed to keep completed jobs around in order to um, ma maintain state, which caused an a lot of extra kind of stress in your cluster. But now um, that, that, that it, the job controller has been re-architected to no longer need that. And some enhancements with this are the job controller can now scale up to um, like 100,000 current 100,000 concurrent pods, which is much more parallel and scalable than previously. Um, next is this allowing for stateful sets to set the uh, replica numbering to control the replica numbering. Uh, this enhancement is going to. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this this is uh, this graduated to alpha in this release, and this allows for your stateful sets. You can specify the the where you want to start the numbering for the replicas from. And this is useful if you need to restart your workload or you want to work or migrate your workload cross namespace, cross cluster and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, next is this pod healthy policy for pod disruption budget. This, is, this has graduated to alpha. This enables specifying pod disruption budgets for pods that are not ready. Um, and this can help prevent data loss by preventing not ready pods from being evicted. Um, so until somebody has a chance to either automatically or, or automatically or manually go and recover that data. Um, this can also prevent some deadlocks in the system where if you have a lot of pods that aren't ready, um, you can request that they do get evicted now. And uh, the last one for SIG apps is this retriable and non-retriable pod failures for jobs. This is graduating to beta. This provides a mechanism to enable workflows to differentiate between retrieval and non-retrieval failures um, to help enlighten your, your cluster for things like transient or infrastructure failures um, to, to retry on those and not if it's like a workload failure. And uh, 
for SIG uh, auth and SIG CLI and SIG instrumentation, um, I'll uh, pass it back again to uh, Leonard. All right. Um, so on my side, I, I don't know. I have the next bug maybe. I, I, I still see the validating admission policy slide. So it's kind of stuck. Um, but I can just pull up the slides on my side. and then Oh, but it's, uh, I think that... Uh, is so. everyone, yeah, you see reduction of secret based service account tokens, right? I don't know. No, I, I don't know. There's some bug on my side. Okay, but uh, it doesn't matter because I have the slide as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I can I can just pull it up uh, one second. And yeah. okay, right. So um, for this one, um, so we are in SIG auth, reduction of secret based exactly. service account tokens. Awesome. So this uh, cap graduates to beta, um, to, to the beta stage, and it introduces actions to reduce the surface area of secret-based service account tokens. Um, so the goals are um, no auto-generation of secret-based service account tokens uh, like uh, standard. Um, you, you can enable this. Um, and removal of unused auto-generated service-based account uh, secret based service account tokens. Um, so these are some tweaks, I would say. Um, for the next one. Yes, OAuth uh, API. I, uh, right, I, I don't see when the slide changes. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will tell you when I change. I, okay. I change to uh, OAuth API. Okay, we have. We have okay, OAuth API. <laughs> to get self user attributes, right? So this uh, graduates to alpha, as you can see on the right side. Um, it adds a new API endpoint, um, but, um, which you can use to run uh, Who Am I, which you basically on, on kubectl, um, which is a nice addition, I think. So this is a new API endpoint, which gets added and uh, also a new uh, kubectl command. So pretty neat feature. Okay. For... CLI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right. Uh, the first one, or should I introduce the SIG? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a SIG about, about the, the CLI, basically. So it should be sort of self-explanatory, I, I guess. Um, the six, uh, CLI has one cap this uh, cycle. It's, a, it's stage beta about kubectl events. So um, there's in the past, or we are still using kubectl get events. Now there's like a um, new like top level command, which is kubectl events. So there are like some internal reasons why this is needed, uh, some limitations. Um, so yeah, uh, as far as I know, there's at the moment no like new features, but this enables us to add like new features, which the, the community requested to it. Mm. Okay. I, I've changed to SIG instrumentation. Mm. Okay. Um, so the SIG instrumentation, um, I can just read out, covers best practices for cluster observability through metrics, logging events, and traces across all communities' components and development of re re relevant components such as K-log and cube state metrics. Um, coordinates metrics requirements of different SIGs for other components, including finding common APIs. Um, Starting with the open API v3. Right, so this cap uh, is at stage alpha and it basically updates kubectl explain to use uh, the open API v3 spec and no longer API v2 spec. Um, so this just enrich the data which you get if you if you run this command. Um, if there are, is if there's no API v3 spec available, it will fall back to the v2 spec. So there should be there's um, no issues um, expected on this side. Um, right for the next one. Yeah, CLIs. For, right, Kubernetes component health uh, SLIs. <laughs> SLIs. Um, is uh, is a new cap graduating to, or uh, it's stage alpha. Um, it exposes new health check endpoints, which should uh, allow creating new SLIs and then like related services um, 
and agents and so on can create new SLOs based on that. Um, right. So for the next one, extended extend metrics. Exactly, extended metrics stability. So in in which which uh, at, uh, graduates to alpha. So this is in addition to the metric stability framework, um, which we introduced a couple of cycles ago. There's also a very nice blog post if you're interested about that. Um, so this cycle, we add a little bit more, uh, like two new classes to it, um, internal and beta, um, which is like, like yeah, uh, for the most part, like internal internally. I don't know actually actually how like if uh, how much does this affect like the end user, uh, but um, I think the metric stability framework was very very well received. So ad adding to this is 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 a nice addition. And and and, and you're done. I think now we're uh, <laughs> entering. Uh, well, done for now at least. Uh, okay. Now um, we're entering SIG uh, network, which covers networking in Kubernetes. And uh, as is often the case, SIG network has quite, um, quite a few uh, enhancements. Um, I will actually start by saying something that uh, uh, I think would be important. We've been talking about alpha, beta, and stable uh, issues. Just a very quick um, overview on what does this mean. So obviously this enhancement starts as alpha, proceeds to uh, uh, beta, and then uh, reach stable. If they do not reach stable after a while, they can be obviously deprecated as we showed before. And the major differences is that alpha features are, this in general, are off by default, but can be enabled by using a feature gate. Uh, uh, beta features are on by default, but can be disabled uh, using that feature gate. And stable features are considering a maintained support of the, in the long-term part of the of, of Kubernetes. Um, so um, with that, uh, we have the um, uh, this enhancement of uh, service internal traffic policy that gra gra graduates to stable. Uh, and uh, which uh, essentially allows uh, to define uh, a, a, a specific policy in uh, terms of the service that will allow uh, routing to be limited to services running uh, on uh, the, the that uh, same node. So to, to, to limit the, the, the forwarding um, in terms of the service, uh, and um, and uh, and limited to uh, the specific target. Uh, we have, and these are all relatively related and are connected uh, uh, enhancements. Um, proxy terminating endpoints uh, enable zero downtime deployments for services with external traffic policy equals local. Uh, this because uh, in some use cases and depending obviously on many different configuration choices, um, it, it, it was possible that uh, when changing the external, external traffic policy, some uh, downtime uh, would, would happen. Uh, this um, uh, enhancement uh, reduces the, that potential traffic loss from uh, um, queue proxy uh, on rolling updates, um, exactly because the traffic was being sent to pods that were uh, uh, terminating and thus uh, unable to uh, address that uh, request. Tracking terminating endpoints uh, graduates to stable as well. And this one adds a way to track the terminating state of an endpoint through the endpoint slice API. Uh, so not by getting the information pod, uh, by, by pod, but specifically using the endpoint slice API, which obviously is much more scalable and uh, enables consumers of the API to make smarter decisions when it comes to handling uh, terminate, terminating endpoints. Uh, minimizing IP tables restore input sizes. Uh, this is a new feature, an alpha uh, feature, um, which uh, is actually quite important in terms of performance uh, for uh, very large clusters. Uh, uh, because the IP tables restore uh, command can take quite uh, a long time to run uh, due to the, the sheer amount of network rules that end up being created uh, by the several Kubernetes networking uh, 
um, objects and policies. Uh, so uh, this uh, enhancement uh, drastically uh, improves the performance of the IPA tables with SOAR command. Uh, support of mixed protocols and services with type load balancer. Um, so this um, is a uh, enhancement that graduates to stable and uh, it enables the creation of a load balance service that has different port definitions with different protocols, allowing users to expose their applications through a single IP address, but different level, uh, layer four uh, protocols with a cloud provider uh, load balancer. Uh, this, uh, for example, uh, means that uh, the, there were some cases where this was already possible to TCP or, or UDP, but this one uh, generalizes it and makes it uh, um, and, and reduces the coordinate cases that were not really well documented that could uh, result in this not working. This adds that support explicitly and thus makes it uh, both possible and also uh, consistent and resilient uh, and, and, and defines that expected behavior. Um, reserve service IP ranges for dynamic and static IP allocation, uh, graduates to stable. So this is uh, essentially uh, around this. Cluster IPs can be assigned dynamically or statically. Um, what this enhancement does is it splits the range that is used by static and dynamic uh, allocation so that uh, a specific situation can be avoided, which is uh, someone specifying a, a static IP because it was free at the time, but by the time it gets used, dynamic allocation uh, would already have uh, used it because it was free in the meantime. So by splitting uh, between uh, these two use, uses, um, it's clear that a part of that range will be manually uh, consumed and the other will be dynamically. Expanded DNS configuration uh, allows Kubernetes to have an expanded DNS configuration that allows more DNS search paths and a longer list of DNS search paths. This uh, graduates to beta and um, essentially is, 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 is um, add, adding to Kubernetes the evolutions that have been done, not only in terms of the DNS support in uh, the new libc uh, and, and other uh, underlying Linux uh, components. Uh, that uh, adds more configuration options and remove some of the limitations that uh, existed at a certain point in time, but uh, do not uh, make sense to keep uh, right now. And uh, with, uh, with that, we end uh, the list of enhancements from uh, SIG network, and we have the enhancements for SIG nodes, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, this is uh, picked up by Mark, right? Yep, yep, thank you, Fred. Um, so SIG node is, uh, they are responsible for all of the components that run on the nodes and, well, well mo that, that control the interactions between the pods and the hosts, most notably the kubelet. Okay, so this enhancement, uh, dynamic re resource allocation, which is uh, graduated to alpha, um, this adds a new set of APIs that allows for workloads to specify resources other than memory or CPU. Um, and it also allows for sharing of resources between multiple containers or pods. Um, this is quite a big enhancement over the previous way of allocating resources. So anybody who's interested, um, I'd recommend them to go read the blog post and read up on the cap. Uh, device manager, device manager is graduating to stable. Uh, this enhancement has actually been in beta since 110 and um, there's just finally time to graduate it. The device manager is a kind of a, a plugin and an, or a, I think it's an API. It's a way of um, kind of advertising and allocating um, different external devices, which you can use and assign into your, your containers, um, such as like GPU devices and FPGA devices. Mm -hmm. uh, next is uh, CPU manager, which has also been in beta since uh, 110 and is graduating to stable. On um, the CPU manager, it's part of the kubelet and it's responsible for um, assigning the uh, CPUs to containers. Um, and prior to this, there was potentially a lot of issues uh, if you specified more than one CPU for your um, for your your resource limits or requests, 
um, you could land, a, you, that could get split across multiple CPUs and you would spend a lot of time uh, just cycling with that. Uh, next is the Kubelet credential provider. This is graduated to stable. Uh, this provides a plugin model for uh, registering and um, basically for authing to different container registries. So previously, every time the Kubelet wanted to authenticate to a new container registry, it needed uh, code needed to be added to the Kubelet to understand how to talk with that. Um, the Kubelet credential provider provides a plugin model to eliminate that, which is simplifying maintenance and making it easier to support more registries. Uh, next is this improved uh, multi-NUMA alignment in the top topology manager. This enhancement is uh, graduated to alpha. Previously, the topology manager, um, you could assign, you could assign uh, pods to specific NUMA nodes or ensure that all of your containers land on a specific NUMA node, but it didn't have any uh, kind of awareness of the distance between the NUMA nodes, which is becoming more of an issue with um, like multi-socket processors. So this enhancement allows you to, to basically specify like a minimum distance or um, between your NUMA nodes to get these workloads to kind of land in the same proximity of each other. Uh, next is this kubelet evented uh, uh, PLEG for uh, better performance or the pod lifecycle event generator. This enhancement is graduating to alpha and this enhancement is tracking um, outlining changes to the kubelet and the container runtime interface to move to a list watch model instead of a continuous polling model. And the goals of this is to reduce the steady state CPU usage of the kubelet and the container runtime. But or last, I think, is the CRI or C advisor less CRI full container and pod stats enhancement. And this has graduated to alpha. This allows for the kubelet to get all of the container and pod stats for over the, the CRI or the container runtime interface from the container runtime instead of also having the kubelet query into the C advisor to get some missing stats. So this is just um, kind of removing some duplicated work and putting more responsibility onto the container runtime, which is where it belongs. Thank you. All right, back to my slides. <laughs> so for SIG release, um, which handles all the releases. So for example, the release team is part of the SIG release. We have one cap. Um, signing release artifacts, which graduates to beta. Um, so this release, or with this cap, we now sign all the release artifacts um, so users can verify the integrity and uh, of the downloaded resources. So this includes all the um, like binary artifacts. So what we listed here, um, so the tables, the binary artifacts, the software bill of materials, the SBOMs, and we use cosign, um, yeah. So there's also, for example, if you're interested in this entire like S bombs um, uh, theme and topic and everything, the Kubernetes uh, release team is quite like uh, like a forerunner or like a pioneer, I would say, a little bit. So if you're interested in this, um, there's also a lot of good um, resources, blog posts about these topics. Right, to the next one, six scheduling, um, which is responsible for the components that make pod placement decisions. We have two caps. The first one is um, pod scheduling readiness. Um, so currently pods are considered um, like ready for scheduling as soon as they are created. And, and in general, this is fine, but in some scenarios or in like uh, like often or in few cases, this is um, um, not the case and uh, pods are not ready as soon as they are created. And at the moment, um, or there have not been like any like uh, options to um, control that behavior that these pods are not ready. So with this cap, um, we introduce uh, a new um, uh, like parameter to the API spec, which allows you to control this behavior. So you can set scheduling gates, um, which defines if a pod is, for example, unschedulable, um, or you can define like a pod scheduled condition. For the next one, um, 
take Tain's tolerations into consideration when calculating pod topology spread skew. It graduates to beta. Um, so this um, defines an, a node inclusion policy and an, a topology spread constraints, um, which you can set to control the behavior um, where the pods are scheduled. Um, so and I will pick back uh, to, to, to describe the several enhancements of six storage, which is responsible for ensuring that different types of file and block storage are available uh, wherever a container is scheduled. So um, it tackles everything storage related with Kubernetes and trying to uh, split things up a bit. Um, I'll go through this relatively briefly. Non-grateful node shutdown. Uh, this is a, a beta feature that uh, allows stateful workloads to fail over to a different node after the, ori the original node is shut down or is in, in a non-recoverable state, such as a hardware failure or a broken uh, OS. Uh, allow Kubernetes to supply pods uh, FS group to the CSI driver on mount, graduates uh, to stable. This uh, essentially allows the CSI driver to uh, have the option to apply the FS group setting uh, during uh, volume uh, mount point. Uh, in uh, contrast with what was before, that the the that was uh, de defined in one place and was not settable by the CSI dri the driver. Provisioning volumes from cross namespace snapshots. Uh, this is an alpha uh, feature um, that allows you to specify the data source for a, a persistent volume cl claim, even uh, when the, the source data belongs to a different uh, namespace. Um, this new, with this new feature enable uh, specifying a data, data source rep field, um, uh, you specify data source rep field and once uh, that Kubernetes checks that, that access is okay, the new uh, persistent volume can populate its data from the storage source specified in that uh, separate uh, namespace. Um, retroactive default storage class assignments uh, graduates to beta. Uh, with this enhancement, uh, there's no need to create a default storage class first and uh, the, only after that a PVC to assign to that class um, and also uh, allows that any PVC without the storage class can be uh, retroactively um, uh, uh, um, updated to specify to that uh, uh, storage class, uh, even if the PVCs were created before that storage class was uh, defined. This fear uh, entry to CSI driver migration, part of the overall movement of migrating from uh, removing things from the Kubernetes uh, entry, Kubernetes source to uh, external drivers. This one graduates to stable and migrates the internals um, of the vSphere uh, plugin to the vSphere CSI driver, driver while maintaining the original API. And exactly the same uh, is done for the Azure file, also graduated to stable, also with the same motivation and the overall same uh, approach um, as the, the one before. And with this, uh, SIG windows uh, that Mark will, will cover. Yep. Uh, so SIG Windows is a kind of a horizontal SIG focused on supporting Windows uh, functionality across all of the different components like networking, storage, and node. Uh, okay. So this uh, enhancement for support for Windows privileged containers has graduated to stable. Um, support for uh, privileged containers on Windows were um, kind of allow the containers to access host resources and are very useful for many operational type uh, workloads. Um, and so now they have access to all of the host resources. And uh, this enables running things like your CNI solutions, node exporter, node problem detector on all that and managing them as daemon sets. And uh, next is uh, host network support for Windows pods. This is uh, graduated to alpha. This adds support for the kubelets who request that pods uh, getting scheduled on Windows nodes get added to the host's network namespace. Um, this is one kind of a, a parity feature with Linux, but it also helps issues with uh, port exhaustion for large clusters. And uh, this uh, ends our SIG updates. And I think we are actually on time. Uh, just uh, uh, some final words uh, around the release Team Shadow program and, and KubeCon. Um, 
So the release team shadow program um, is a, a Kubernetes release team uh, apprenticeship uh, model program um, that uh, uh, in each uh, release, um, it recruits a certain uh, member of apprentices uh, that get uh, involved in each specific uh, release uh, team. There are several different release uh, uh, Teams, enhancements, CI signal, comms, docs, release notes, etc. And uh, these teams take on um, this uh, shadow uh, shadows uh, in order for them to uh, have hands-on experience with uh, developing a release. Um, and they participate in the release cycle. And hopefully, they uh, with this get involved not only in other Kubernetes uh, community efforts, but uh, can also uh, potentially lead the teams in the future. Um, and uh, and this, is the, um, this is the program. Um, there are several different teams, as I mentioned, uh, release team leads, enhancement, CI signal, but triage, doc, release notes, and communication. Uh, each team has one lead that selects between three and five sh shadows, and each release takes four months. Uh, what I can say right now is that uh, 127 is already ongoing, so the, uh, the the shadow program is not accepting people for the 127 uh, release right now. But anyone uh, listening, uh, uh, please pay um, uh, uh, extra attention after the 127 release is um, published, because in the following uh, weeks, um, uh, uh, an update is sent to the uh, Kubernetes mailing lists uh, that uh, shares a form in which uh, anyone can uh, volunteer uh, and uh, hopefully be integrated into one team and experience being a part of a Kubernetes um, release team. Uh, a final word about the Kubernetes 126 uh, at KubeCon uh, Europe. As I mentioned, KubeCon Europe uh, will, will happen in Amsterdam in the 17th of April. Uh, well, it starts in the 17th with the contributor com and then uh, 18th uh, KubeCon uh, Europe. Um, several of the uh, release team members will, will be there, so we will be more than happy to share some additional uh, thoughts and uh, ideas with anyone uh, attending. Uh, we share here some uh, transparency reports for both KubeCon in Europe and North America, but uh, uh, suffice it to say that is uh, one of the biggest uh, Kubernetes and cloud native related uh, meetings. So we do either physically or virtually, uh, we would um, um, like to, to be able to see uh, any, any of you there and, uh, as I mentioned, uh, share some thoughts, discuss uh, Kubernetes present and future or uh, just um, any other topic. Um, and with that, um, we're uh, done. We still have uh, five minutes and uh, we are more than open for any comments and questions. everyone. All right, let's see if we've got any questions that'll chat. About five minutes left. So ask those burning questions now. Have y'all maybe where they can reach you if you think of something after we end? Oh. I think that um, perhaps the Kubernetes Slack uh, would be a, a good place. Um, so let me okay so the in the sure. community slack we have we have a channel for like sick for each sick sick release uh and and all the other six yeah so if you want to reach like the sick in general you can you can this would be the best place to go if you have like something very specific maybe about like internal processes uh, i don't i don't think this there will be like some some questions about this but there are also like other channels which are more <laughs> Uh, about those so for example if you have like questions about the enhancements team there's like a, a, re a release enhancements cha uh, channel as well and you can also obviously uh, find us or anybody else from the team uh, and send a direct message if you don't want to ask publicly this is totally fine too i just shared the, the, the kubernetes slack uh address in the in the chats and uh, obviously uh, i think all of our names are uh, easily findable on on google and uh, so feel free obviously to 
uh, and actually re reach us in, in Slack there uh, individually if, 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 if needed. Perfect. And yes, if uh, Fred, if somebody will send me the slide deck that yep. you used, I will upload that to the website as well. So you'll be able to get both the recording and the slides. Um, so Absolutely. yes, Victor, you can. All right. I don't see any more questions coming through, so we will wrap this up. But thank you so much, release team. Y'all are wonderful. And um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We will have this online by this afternoon. So if anyone missed it, it will be ready to go. And um, everyone have a great day or evening or depending on where you're calling from. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers.